the friendship, the alumni that helps you, for those who understand business, to do things better in future when you want to do certain things. So let's rest that debate. Since 1992, under President Chiluba, this is the first time that this country has had an invitation to White House. Make your own conclusions. We discussed matters of mutual interest on behalf of the U.S. government, of course, Vice President, herself, who you know has some history with our country. When she was young, she was around this country. She was around our town, to be specific, Lusaka. So we chatted a little bit around those issues, but more important, she represented her government, we represented our government, we represented you on issues, areas of common interest, beneficial to all our people. Their desire, of course, is for stronger and increased mutual relationships. That's our desire as well, as members of the global community, worthy members of the global community. While in Washington, D.C., we met with members of the United States Senate, members of Congress, of the House. They expressed their excitement about the new opportunity in Zambia, what Zambia could offer, what Zambia could get from the relationship with other countries, including the U.S. This is a very important conversation for many of you who understand global issues. We also expressed our desire to work with them to enhance, deepen our democratic maturity as we demonstrated that this country, since 1991, this is the third time that we have experienced a change of government, democratic change of government from one party to another. 91, UNIP to MMD. 2011, MMD to PF. 2021, right? PF to UPND. I know most of our members are still yet, not yet convinced that there's a change of government in their family. <laughs> they are still behaving like they're in the opposition. You can feel that, but uh, who can blame you about it? It's been a long road, but we're here. Yes, we must now act as a party in government, and a party in government has responsibilities to the yes, nation, yes. and we must act correctly. Yes, it's a very strong message I'm sending yes, to the United Party for National Development Let's behave as people in government, people who are responsible for not just the UPND members, but for the welfare of the whole country, 18 million people. You behave differently when you carry that responsibility. And we would like to see that going forward. I'll say a little bit more later on. You will be very happy, and I think some of you watched it, that we were invited to speak at the United States Institute of Peace. And there, it's a think tank. We were lucky to have that opportunity and we affirmed our commitment to peace, democratic processes, rule of law, respect for human rights, liberties and freedoms. And indeed, indeed, maintaining Zambia as a peaceful country. Peace and stability is important for economic advancement. So we discharged our duties there. Some of you don't have to be told you watched that debate. So thank you very much that you had time to watch that debate. And out of that debate, there will be things that will arise. And we understand the things that will arise, and we know, we believe, they will advance the interest of the people of Zambia. We met with a USAID administrator who are doing work here, been doing work here, Samantha Powell, who also pledged to support our development efforts, and particularly the renewed development efforts, because while we're at the UN, if I may tack back a little bit, we made a point that democracy will only be meaningful to us in Africa, to us in Zambia, if it delivers dividends, democracy dividends. What is that we had in mind? Development, opportunity, jobs, food, fair trade, fair trade, so we can also send goods and services across the world. But we can only do that if we are productive ourselves. If we produce nothing, the opportunity will go begging. So we are very clear in that sense. I'm pleased to inform you 
as our nation, as citizens of our nation, that just out of that interaction with the USID administrator and making our case of what we intended to do in this country, we were able to derive an additional $30 million. The US doesn't work like that. It takes time. You make your case, and they will tell you that they will go back to Senate, they will go back to Congress, you have to wait. It doesn't happen like that. After that meeting, within a few days, a confirmation of $30 million more was made to us. It doesn't happen. Check your records. It is the way we made our case. It's the way we argued our case. It's the way we'll continue arguing our case going forward. And you will be happy about it. Just be patient. We haven't even done our budget. Wait and see what is sitting in the budget. The first budget ever of the UPND. Just wait and see. You will see a realignment of certain things. And then you begin to isolate that jobs will come from there. Jobs will come from here and there. We trust you. Be watchful. Be observant and draw your own parallels as to what was obtaining in the past. We will not draw the comparison for you, you will draw it for yourselves. Then you see how serious we are. A lot of things that we discussed out there will be followed. This morning we had meetings in this your state house to now do what I call an action list tagging. Of many meetings we had tagging the specific benefits that Zambians will get through those interactions. And we'll come back to you and say to you, this is a menu of things in addition to this preliminary position that will impact your lives in this sector, in that sector. That's the attribute we carry from business. We bring it into public affairs management. It will benefit this country. Trust us. We focused, amongst other areas, on issues of empowerment. Issues of empowerment, youth empowerment, women empowerment. We focused on job creation. We focused on creating business opportunities for our people. We tied this to our own policies here, such as what? Let me preempt your questions. We want to see, we made a case that ourselves, the Zambians, we walk the talk. One of which I was just about to say, but uh, PA went off, was that we will work to create savings. Three factors I wanted to mention. One all procurement of goods and services and works in government will be anchored on one correct price. This government will not buy anything more than the fair price. Be it fertilizer, be it petroleum, be it construction sector, roads, where the smell of corruption reared its ugly head every single day. No road will be done above what is the correct price, and we know how to determine the correct price. We can benchmark. I know a number of our people are saying they want to be the chairman of the road RDA so that they can do what the former chairman of RDA were doing. It won't happen. It will not happen. You want to be chairman of RDA? You will be a chairman who will work within these three rules. Buy the roads. I'm using a business term. Contract to get a road done at the right price per kilometer. Number two, right quality. Number three, delivery on time. So you may be having a wish which you will not like once you become chairman of RDA. Because if you walk the other way, you'll find yourself in trouble. I'm serious. It's not a joke. 
we want to save money ourselves. We don't go out asking for support before we do our own homework. I've said here before, why should government dig a borehole for 60,000 kwacha when it only costs 20,000 kwacha? Where is the 40,000 kwacha going? Private pockets. You want to be pierced in energy water because you want to dig a borehole at 60,000 kwacha instead of 20,000 kwacha? It won't happen. You do it at your own peril. And don't call me your enemy. I'm your true friend because I'm helping you to do the right thing for the benefit of the people of Zambia. So we reinforce that position that we will do what is within our domain. What else are we going to do? We will ensure that government assets, every asset that was taken away from the people, and we, can, we will know where it is, we will recover it. Yeah. Again, don't say the government is witch hunting. No. Give to Caesar. Who answered that question that way? Pharisees were trying to test Jesus to see whether he understood certain things to catch him on the wrong side. Said, We are tired of paying taxes. He said, Give me a coin. He got a coin, he looked at it, turned it around, he said, Whose image is this? Says Caesar's. So give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Yeah. It's not me. If Jesus can say that. Why would you want to point a finger at me? In the first place, why did you take what is not yours? So, we committed to this as a package to winning the credibility and the support of others. Very important, fellow citizens. So, I will say we focused on job creation, democracy, governance, which includes fighting corruption, but in a professional way. No political hand. I emphasize. I see people are celebrating, are suggesting that there's a confusion in the fight against corruption. Well, let's wait and see. And see who will have a last laugh. It is the people of Zambia. What else did we focus on? Decentralization, devolution, taking resources away from the headquarters of thieving in Lusaka and take it to the constituencies. Take the money to the constituencies. That's where the voters are. That's where the youth are. So that the youth can get some contracts to do a job to build a clinic in a constituency, yes. rather than importing a foreigner to build a clinic in a constituency. Yeah. Guidelines will be provided on how to do that. And we made that case. Once we made that case, others came through and said, today, this week, HH, here's an additional $30 million. That's how you make your case. You don't make your case, and then on the other day you are stealing from the people. We met the IMF. I'm sure you were waiting for that. Yes. We met the IMF. We met the World Bank. We met such other institutions. We expressed our approach, explained to them our approach to running the country. We explained to them that things will be different. In response, goodwill, support, finding solutions where we are unagreed on certain issues. 
so that we can reach agreement, so we can move on on the programs that we've been wanting to do. Re restoring credibility to the financial services sector, not just locally, but globally. If you don't do that, the cost of money will be expensive. The interests will be higher. For some of you, it doesn't make sense. Ask any business person. You want to reduce the cost of money? Part of what you need to do is to come with credibility to the table. That's what we took out there. If we can access funding, which we will for businesses in different sectors at affordable rates, then we'll have done our homework. Then the jobs will come along. Part of our duty is to ensure that our businesses, Zambian, regional, foreign, access, especially Zambian businesses, access affordable capital. Then they can expand. When they expand, they will create more jobs. I guess for the journalists, this subject is a bit boring. But this is real. This is it. This is the one that changes the economy. So we're very pleased with those meetings. And you see some progress around there. The Minister of Finance tomorrow is giving his statement. And he will touch on these issues. He will give the details. Listen to him tomorrow. Division of Labor, isn't it? Listen to him tomorrow. These institutions know what was not going on well here. We know what was not going on well, and we were able to bridge that gap. They are supportive of us, your leadership. It means they are supportive of you, Zambians. They would like us to get into, as we want, an IMF program. Let's not misunderstand the IMF and call IMF conditionality. The fight against corruption is not an IMF condition. It's a UPND government condition. It's the people of Zambia's condition, isn't it? Cutting expenditure is not an IMF program. It is our program. So we can create savings. Getting consensus amongst creditors to dismantle the debt mountain, which is choking a lot of our budget. When you, we do a budget in this country, two items take our money. What are those items? Debt service and salaries, remuneration of those in the public sector. Two items takes away almost 80-90% of the budget. How can you develop with 20% only? You can't. So our job then was to realign the revenue available so that we spend less on consumption and we drive more on investment expenditure. Again, growth will come from there. So we discussed progressive ways of dismantling this debt mountain which is distortionary. It also doesn't make sense. I ask you a question. Don't answer the question. I'll answer it for you. How is it that you borrow over $20 billion as a country on one side, and on the other side, there are no assets to show the value of $20 billion? How can that be? There's something wrong there. This is a situation we found. And we are determined to unblock it. And that's what we are doing here. So to come to a progressive way of dealing with our debt situation so that we can release resources for development. There's no question about that. That there's an increased investor confidence in our country. And we owe it to you, the people of Zambia, who elected a credible team. That's it. We owe it to you. The global stage is now saying Zambia's position has been restored in the community. Just one trip 
We will take one or two more trips. Your guess is as good as mine. With this kind of conversations in our visit, this kind of meetings, with this kind of interactions, we are confident that we will be in a better position, better equipped to turn around our economy, to fight corruption, to recover stolen assets, because we need global cooperation. The colleagues that took assets were quite elaborate. Eh? Assets are far. Some assets, your assets have been taken so far too far. To retrieve them, we have to cooperate with others. And we are on the road to doing that. With the multiple engagements we had, it was clear that Zambia is now a country that inspires confidence. A country that has regained its respectability, its respect on the global stage. Let's have that same respectability back at home. And when we say things here, we must say things as they are. Innuendo, assumptions based on non-facts will not help the economy. The economy works on sentiments. If you send the wrong sentiments, it will not help the economy. That's why this press conference is taking place. We owe you a briefing, isn't it? We owe it to you. You are the owners of this country. Yes. But once we give you the briefing, extract the facts out of this briefing and run with the facts, not different things. And I want to confront one issue here. But before I do that, the aim of our trip was to strengthen Zambia's position in the world, to be a better place, country, to grow our economy, to build our partnerships that will help us accelerate development. As always, for jobs, for business, for, for health, for education, you will hear the Minister of Finance how we have been able, out of this trip, to arrange things that will allow us to employ more teachers who have been walking the streets without jobs to employ more health workers. I leave that to him. This is how the world works. This is how the world works. We are confident that to the business community, there are new opportunities coming for you. Prepare yourselves to act credibly so you can partner others who will bring value and help you expand your own business. We will assist you doing that. We will assist you, work with you. But be credible yourselves. When you get equity partners, money comes in, you sell for money and go and buy a BMW. It won't help you grow your business. It won't. Buy a machinery that produces something for you to sell into Congo and will help you get a market in Congo. I'm serious. Yes. Then you create the jobs that the youth are crying for. This trip was nothing else other than the things I've said here. It was for nothing else other than the things I said here. It was for to create a case for Zambia, to market Zambia, not by falsehoods, but by facts. And to attract colleagues that share our vision and values, and therefore bring in investments in our country. But investments won't come if it takes one year to get a title deed. Some of you go to lands for one year, you don't get a title deed. We want the title deed to be issued on time so that you can now work on your plot, on your factory, with your partners and create jobs. That we are going to do. You don't have to corrupt anybody going forward 
to get your title at lands. You don't have to corrupt anyone in the council to get your restaurant license going forward. We are coming for you. Those who want corruption, who want a bribe in order to give an operating license. Those of you who hold back your citizens' business activities so they can pay you a backhander. The system will catch you. Because you are the ones destroying jobs. So we have a menu for everybody and everything. Just watch our steps. We did not go out there for lesbian rights. You haven't heard me. You have not heard me. We did not go there to talk about lesbian rights. We did not go there for that. Thank you. We did not go there for what I've just said. This is the point I want to make and make emphatically. Follow the issues, please. You are free. This is a democracy. Say what you want. But just say, tell the truth. That's all. <laughs> no one will pursue you, but ultimately you make yourself irrelevant. Say the truth. No one went for an agenda of those issues. The Constitution provides for those issues. I'm not a Constitution. I'm an Adventist myself. I'm an elder in the church. I even had time to attend service. I had time to attend service in Washington. And I was given time to talk. I didn't want to talk. I talked enough in the boardrooms there. I just sang my lovely song in my mother's tongue. And the Americans loved it. That's it. So, please, you are free to say what you want. You are free as journalists to write what you want. Remember, we have suggested that you self-regulate. I'm sure you are taking advantage of that. You are creating structures that will allow you to self-regulate. But honestly, if someone is writing falsehoods, you should also be free to challenge them on your own that there is nothing like that in the agenda. But allow them the space to make people know who they are, truly. Don't gag them. Give them a space to say what they want. You then have space to correct what they're saying. So we did not have any other issues to discuss other than around these issues. And we'll continue doing that for the greater good of this country. We have no qualms, no shame, no worries about any falsehoods. We are used to these falsehoods anyway. There's nothing new. Absolutely nothing new. But very few customers will be listening to those falsehoods going forward. Because people want value. And we work, we're working towards delivering value. Few things on the domestic scene. The coronavirus. The coronavirus has claimed lives of many of our loved ones. First wave, second wave, third wave killed a lot of our people. Let's not have short memories. A lot of our people died during the third wave. This pandemic is deadly. We say what we're saying because the fourth wave is coming. It will be upon us very soon. It will be deadly. We must act together. We must act in unison. Part of our mission there, out there, those far away lands, was to ensure that we get the required support to fight to combat this coronavirus, to bring it under control. We don't bring this virus under control. 
it will be difficult for us to work the economy. Please, let's just respect science. Masks are still important. I check around. Please put your, put your masks on. <laughs> Please. Let's protect the loved, one, loved ones next door to us. In the house, in the streets. We made our case at the UN General Assembly that COVID knows no borders. The rich countries are vaccinating their people. We've only managed to vaccinate 3%. We intended to vaccinate by this time on somewhere next year, maybe by the end of this year, 70% of our population, eligible population. We won't do it. It won't happen because we don't have the resources. So we have asked for the global community, the UN level, to increase the vaccines available to lesser developed countries like us. We made our case very clear. We were emphatic. And the message was heard. More vaccines are coming. More vaccines are coming. But we have vaccine hesitancy. Some of us are reeling in whatever beliefs that somebody is going to control us genetically. That is not true, please. Don't allow more of our loved ones to die. I have been vaccinated, double vaccination. My wife has been vaccinated. My children have been vaccinated. We will encourage all of you to take the vaccination. Don't wait until your uncle is dead. I remember what happened in the third wave once people were dying, then there were queues for vaccinations. Don't wait for that time, please. And the Minister of Health, the COVID advisor we have appointed to show you that we're raising the stakes on this issue, on this pandemic, we've appointed the COVID advisor to work with the Ministry of Health, to work with experts, to protect our frontline staff, medical staff, Teachers are frontline staff. Pupils are frontline people. We need to take care of our people. My appeal to you is that can we take responsibility in fighting this pandemic? A bit more local issues. And hear me out, please. I'll say this for the last time. We reaffirm our commitment to ending Qadarism in public places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Council authorities are not Qadars who collect revenues and manage markets, bus stops, full stop. That's it. There was no need to run a debate around this issue. Let's step aside a bit. Why did we say cadres will not run markets? What was the issue? The issue was in the previous government that cadres took away market stores from citizens, cadres from one political party took away stores from widows. And if you try to fight for your store, you were beaten. That was the issue, number one. Two fundamental issues. Cardas controlling the markets, taking away market stores from citizens. It doesn't matter which political party they, they are, but the citizens of Zambia. Who should be free to trade in these markets? Cardas took the law in their own hands. Somehow, councils obliged themselves to allow cadres of one political party, let's be specific, PF, to exercise hooliganism in markets, violence in the markets. It will not happen. It will not happen again. Second issue, 
was that cadres were collecting revenues meant to be collected by councils, drying the councils of much needed revenue to provide services, water, toilets, clean toilets in the markets, garbage collection, even paying salaries of council workers. PF cadres took away a lot of money, stole a lot of money, and they were allowed to do that for 10 years. Hear me out. These two things we did not like as a party, we do not like as citizens of Zambia. Violence, abuse, and taking revenue. They were not just taking revenue from marketeers, they were taking revenue even from taxi drivers, minibus drivers in Kulima there. Yes, you went and delivered a truck of tomatoes or cabbage at Soweto, the cutters took that truck away from you and gave you a price, a lower price, and they sold your truck of tomatoes and vegetables at a higher price and made a profit and the farmer went home with a loss. We were elected by those farmers. We were elected by those taxi drivers, minibus drivers, by the woman marketeer whose five boxes of tomato was grabbed from the cutters when she took 20 boxes and was left with 15 boxes. And the price was being determined by cutters. It will not happen again. I want to address UPND. If it was bad when it was done by PF, it is bad when it's done by UPND. Hear me out. Just hear me out. Law and order is part of the ticket that brought us into government. We will not run away from that ticket obligations. The issues of PF taking stores, all the stores in the last 10 years, can be dealt with properly between the council and citizens whose stores were taken away, grabbed away by cutters. That's no-brainer. It's not a debate issue. It's a no-brainer. The markets are now open, bus stops are open, taxi runs are open to all taxi drivers. Because there were taxi drivers who were chased from the taxi ranks because they were not PF. They must return to those taxi ranks. Does that require intellectualism? So are the marketeers. Not UPND marketeers, but all Zambians. All of them. We want to bring civility in the market so that any citizen can trade there as long as they've capital, they've accessed the store, working with the council. I'm aware that, that they are market cooperatives. I'm aware of that. Those are managed under, I think, local authorities as well. There's an arrangement they have there. Let's not confuse things here. To my colleagues in the UPND, this debate must end today. Our youth leaders across the country, do not be the enemy of your own government. Do not undermine your own party. Do not become the new thugs in town. We are civilized people. Trade in the market. You were taken away from the market. Work with the councils. Discuss those issues. You can't have one political party occupying all the stores. Because that's what PF did over 10 years. That's an issue. But deal with that issue. That is not an issue that now entitles you to go back to the market in a violent way and begin to frighten the very voters that gave you the opportunity to run this country. Mm. Do not be your own enemy. If it's PF cutters disguised in UPND name, it's easy to isolate them, isn't it? We support our youth to do something gainful. We support you. You know that. We support you to get financial, support, financial credit. That's why we set up the small, medium enterprise. We support you. 
you will see the support in reality very soon. But you can't expect us to do that within 30 days of forming government. What magic would we play? We have to get the economy going. That magic did not mean you becoming the new thugs in the markets. Provincial Chairman Lusaka organized a meeting with our members in Lusaka, not in this state house, at our secretariat. We will be able to discuss, I'll be there. We will talk, let's discuss. We have a lot for you more than you have ever imagined. So don't disturb, don't spoil your dish. We have a lot. You will see going forward, no new timber license will be given to a foreigner. Nothing. Yeah. Zero. Those licenses will go to Zambians. Youth, women, all of you. So calm down. Don't spoil your own dish. We made a case out there that in the mining sector, we want to see Zambians being shareholders there. We want to see Zambians taking the priority for employment. We don't want to see a tractor driver who is a foreigner. We want to see a Zambian driving a tractor, driving a crane, driving an excavator on the mine. Don't spoil your dish by being the new hooligans around. There will be nothing like that. It will not happen. You do that, you'll be faced with the police. The police will confront you. Leaders of our party, don't agitate the youth to do wrong things at all levels. Do not do that because you'll be in direct confrontation with your president. Your president wants law and order. Your president cares for you. Your president wants to make opportunities available for you than ever before. But true for other youth, true for other women, true for other Zambians, who were elected by almost three million people in a landslide victory. Zambians wanted stability, wanted peace. They, want, they call it Freedom Day. Now we want to take away their freedom, newfound freedom. They call it New Dawn. Women, don't start singing songs that agitate in the wrong direction. If you allow these people to grow new thuggerism, they will come for you. And don't come to me to complain. You will have generated them. You will have bred them in your homes. Today I'm direct. I don't want to go beating about the bush. I want this media to come to UPND meetings, to any political party meeting, without a fear of them being attacked. That's a freedom we fought for. Shall I say something again? Councils take charge of the markets. Bus stops, taxis, as per your mandate. Be fair to citizens. If stands were taken by one political party, it's time you reorganize that. Because that's where the pressure is coming from. You have our support in that direction. But policing society is a job of the police. It's not the job of cadres, PF, whether you wear a UPND t-shirt, it will not work. If you are joining UPND, do not go in that direction. I think you have heard me. I'm your servant. I will always work for you. But don't catch me on the wrong side. Women are important in our community. Very important. I hear a lot of issues raised about women participation. Why don't we check the facts again? Women are very important to us. We support women as we support youth. We have a woman vice president. We have a woman vice president. We have the first woman speaker of the National Assembly.
deputy speaker is also a woman. Deputy whip in the National Assembly is also a woman. Minister of Labor is a woman. Minister of Health is a woman. Minister of Information and the Media is a woman, isn't it? We have now reached a point where PSCs are coming through. We have been methodical. You dismantle problems in a methodical way. If you don't do that, well, you get it wrong. And then it will bite you. It will bite you and bite you very badly. I guess you got used to haphazardness in the past. Ten years is a lot of time for haphazardness to entrench itself like it's a norm. No, that was haphazardness. Let's be methodical. We don't want what we do to bite us. In the last 30 days, I have picked a lot of information. I'm a good learner. And I'm sure others are good learners. We now can move, and you see the speed we'll move with, because we've picked a lot of issues now. And you'll be very happy. You will see more women. We have permanent secretaries coming. We have various commissions coming. We have various ambassadorial positions coming. And you'll see a lot more women there. So be calm. But I'm sure you want to see your husbands also taking some positions, isn't it? I'm sure you want to see your sons as well, isn't it? As you want to see your daughters taking positions, you want to see your sons as well. Aren't you the mothers to your sons? Aren't you the wives to your husbands? Equity. I have made my case today. I guess I deserve a rest. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for being attentive. I'm sorry that at some point the PA failed us, but I'm sure you got the message. My eyes were flashing around. I have seen that radio station. I promised to have an open radio programs where Zambians will be asking questions of any kind on an open radio line. And no one will be harassed. No one. All we'll do, I'll have my staff that will be taking numbers, names, people complaining, Chama. That very afternoon, we'll send people to go and attend to the people's complaints in Chama. Any nearest government department there. That's what we want to do. We want to talk to our people. We don't mind the questions they ask us. It's them to ask the right questions. It's our obligation to answer. Director of Ceremonies, I'm done for today. Thank you very much, colleagues, for being here. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, we shall now proceed to uh, taking a couple of questions. We are going to take two sets of two sets of three questions, uh, all of which we ask that they be concise and stretch the point. No consolidated questions, please. And let us make sure that we ask questions within the remit of what Mr. President has said. Can we also please get a good balance between public press? the private press, and also the, uh, the freelancers. I know the freelancers are also here. So I will proceed to taking sure the first I don't know, I'm saying uh, things set I'm not of sure about three this. questions. Right. Can we make... Can we make some room here so that people can come through nicely to ask their questions? I will take one question from the last. I will take another question from Mr. Mwewa. I'm also going to take another question from ZNBC for starters. Please. Please come this way. Thank you. That's 
Mr. President, good afternoon. Afternoon. My name is Oliver Tsinga from the Mask newspaper. Um, among the many things that uh, Zambians have been talking about, the critics out there, is uh, the issue of uh, the Gulf Stream. I remember during your campaign, you talked about having found a buyer for the Gulf Stream. Uh, we are wondering whether that buyer is back pedal. Then secondly, are you going to use One question. Choose your question. One question. Well, it's just clarity about uh, about the Gulf Stream. There's been a lot of talk whether you're going to use it or not, and if you found a buyer, if it's going to be sold. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. President, uh, once again, congratulations on the speech at the UN. Very inspiring. One question, Mr. President. As you know, this kind of issue is very controversial. My question is, how do you balance the party's desire to have a firm footing within our communities in terms of spreading the message of the new dawn? and the president's position in making sure that Qatarism, which I would assume you, you, you define as thuggerism, how do you strike a balance there? Because uh, it's on the ground, I can tell you, the moment you announce that our people in the markets, in the street, can wear whatever color they want, it was, it was amazing to watch that everybody wore what they wanted for the first time. In the past, in city market, you couldn't wear anything red. You were victimized. So, so that is my question. How do you balance? The party needs to, to have a firm footing in terms of spreading the, the UPND ideology. Yes, sir. Understood. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I just want to find out the previous PF administration embarked on various infrastructure projects across different sectors from health, education, and also roads. I want to find out your policy on continuity of these projects and the rebirth of the airline. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, colleagues in the media, and again, I'm going to re-emphasize this. All questions must be within the remit of what Mr. President has addressed. If you desire to ask a question outside of that, Please do send through by all means and every means. Do send through a press party, and we shall be kind enough and prompt enough to respond to that. So, can we have a set of three ladies, please, to come through? As you come through, please indicate your names very clearly, and also the media organisation that you are representing, please. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Priska Lumingo from Millennium Radio. Uh, when you met uh, the U.S. Vice President, you talked about, you said there was need for Zambia to realign its values to that of the U.S. Can you clarify on that? What values were you talking about? Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I'm Virginia Chugongo from Movie TV. Um, this morning, we were just informed by the Auditor General that, um, and he has since released a report, that um, about 1.4 billion kwacha was spent on wasteful um, expenditure in the year 2020. You've spoken about um, we are addressing the procurement processes, but then um, a huge chunk of this financial irregularity was the failure by government institutions to honor contract obligations. So I'd like to find out from you how you hope to address this and what targets you set for your, you set for your administration. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Next question, please, and Mr. President then may respond. Good afternoon. My name is Sharon Kalimula from Cambridge TV. Mr. President, before I ask a question, I just want to bring to your attention, obviously, what is already on your table, that while we have this press conference here, one of the registrations in the SACA that you appeared on was gutted on the 28th of September 2021. And we are here to represent them and we wish them well. My question, Mr. President, is that, what, first of all, I'm from Cabinet TV, I'm not sure if I mentioned. My question is that you spoke highly of fighting corruption while you were campaigning, but then you've been in government for close to two months, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> 
three months. One, one month. month. <laughs> oh, okay, I think I'm going to refactor. Maybe I transitioned you too quickly. It's okay. So yes, but then your people seem to be agitated, thinking you're not putting much effort in ensuring that the people that have uh, pre um, uh, um, committed these atrocities are brought to book. Just how much are you doing in ensuring that people are brought to book? I know you've mentioned to say everything will be brought back to what uh, to, to, to the people whom uh, these things belong to, but just how long are the people going to wait? Thank you very much. The President will respond. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the questions, colleagues. Um, Oliver, Gulfstream, um, have you changed your mind or is there a buyer? Would you sell it or not? Our position is the same. It has not changed, Oliver. It hasn't changed. We're consistent people. If we were driven by, you know, the few good factor and desire to fluffy around with the so-called luxury when citizens are suffering, we could have just gotten into a Gulf Stream, Gulf, Gulf Stream and flew to the U.S. We had to take a commercial flight as part of delivering our message about the Gulf Stream that we did not agree in the manner in which it was passed. Why did the debate start in the first place? Because we were concerned about the cost of that air, airplane, isn't it? Was a fair price paid? paid. Isn't it? We thought it was expensive, it was unnecessary at the time for the price. Let's understand each other. For the price. You can buy a bicycle. If the bicycle, let me change it, Oliver, if the bicycle costs 2,000 kwacha, and you go and buy the same bicycle at 20,000 kwacha, or 10,000 kwacha, you've lost Let's assume that bicycle, you're a worker in government. Instead of buying it at 2,000, you go and pay 10,000. What have you done? The bicycle is necessary, yes, isn't it? L let's be smart here. Let's use our gray matter just a little bit, right? The bicycle is needed for a messenger in your office, a government office, to deliver mail within a short distance. Let's, 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 let's move from a bicycle. Let's use a practical example, a motorbike for a messenger to deliver mail in a township, in a government office somewhere. And the motorbike is for 20,000 kwacha. You as a controlling officer, you go and pay 40,000 kwacha for a motorbike. First, have you paid the right price? So why have you paid an additional 20,000? Something wrong there, isn't it? That's what we contended. And soon you'll understand why we did that. Now we have the figures. And we've been proven right. Two, second question. Is it that the, you don't want the motorbike to deliver mail or not? The motorbike is necessary, isn't it? But we are co concerned about the price you paid, Oliver. That settles this debate. It was not an emotional attachment because somebody was riding a gap suit. If it was that perception, I could have simply, you know, <laughs> President is a commander in chief, eh? I could have simply said, Zaf, where is the pilot? Let's go to New York. By the way, the pilot was ready. And I had to fight with Zaf for not using that plane. And I said to Zaf, I'm not using it on principle. My argument remains the same. Bamwewa. Senga, you will see soon, we are taking that matter to cabinet, we are taking it to parliament, and then at that point, numbers will become known to all of you. Then you will see who, is, who loves this country and who did not love this country. You make your own judgment. But it doesn't mean that the plane is not necessary. You understand me? Like the motorbike, you need a motorbike to deliver mail. But why would you pay twice the price? That's what we want the Zambians to now know and decide what to do. That makes sense, a lot of sense. It will be very soon you will get to know those figures and you will be frightened yourself. Remember we say three principles, buy at the right price, quality, delivery. 
Let's assume the quality is right. Delivery was on time. What about the first factor, the price? Why pay? Let me not dwell into that, because I want you to get your figures first hand. You'll be shocked, Oliver. Then you start thinking differently as you see certain people walk your streets. You start looking at them from with a different eye, with a squinty eye. How could a normal person do a thing like that? That's the issue, Oliver. We haven't changed our view a bit. And I think Zambians, you must get used to consistent people. You've been used to something else, and it's become normal. You find me abnormal because I'm consistent. And because I'm concerned about your money. And you find me abnormal. You think now I hate certain people. No, I don't. I'm concerned about your money because that money abuse there could have been used to do many things that are not happening now. I guess I've answered your question. Just be patient, Oliver. You will, you, you'll be scared. What you will hear and see, you'll be scared yourself. Even I, I had no idea it was that sort of situation. Now I know. I'm in a privileged position to know. I know for you on your behalf. And my position remains. And I actually, I was saying to myself, hey, well done, you chap. Eh? You, were, you were telling the truth. Now the facts, the figures are here before you. And I looked at the figures, Oliver, once. Is this real? Twice. Three times. And more things came associated with that item. It's disgusting. It's, it's shameful. Be careful when you elect presidents next time. Be careful. <laughs> Your question is very good. Trick cutters are a trick issue. How do we strike a balance? UPND wants to entrench itself in the community. That is true. We are a political party. We mobilize. We won this election without having cutters controlling markets. We couldn't even enter markets. Anyone who entered with a UPND decision, you were beaten to, for, for killing. But we won the election, isn't it? It means we mobilized, isn't it? So mobilization is cru crucial. But we want to mobilize as UPND, and we shall. Make no mistake about it. <laughs> we shall mobilize. We are aware of what our colleagues are trying to do. Um, they are free to regroup, but they have a big task ahead of them. <laughs> they have a big task ahead of them. Zambians are not foolish. Eh? The, the memories are fresh. We lost people. People were killed. All I'm saying, Bamwewa, I don't want us to be the new killers. That's all I'm saying. If it injured us to be killed, to be beaten in the market, how would it please us to beat other people in the market? Common sense, isn't it? Yes. If you are a youth leader in UPND, and you know what we were discussing, how we had to campaign in a difficult way, we were not allowed to go to prisons. You remember? Yes. When pri prisoners were allowed to vote, only one party was allowed to campaign in prisons. Only one part. Did we like it? No. Did we win in the prisons? Yes, we won. How did we do it? We reached out in a different way, in a clever way. Why don't we use that formula which works very well for us? Why do we want to be the new team that beats people out there? Fortunately, your own servant called HH will not allow that to happen. But you are free to campaign, you are free to mobilize anywhere. That's the law. It's in the Bill of Rights. You are also free as a party, like other parties, to trade in a market. Am I talking to somebody here? Because you are driven out of the market by thugs. So you are free to return. It's the question of the councils now sitting with the communities to make sure that 
all community members have access to these markets to trade, yes. to sell bread, yes. to sell carpenter, to go and buy what I want. Bamweo, as president of the UPND, with all my support base, I couldn't go into Soweto there. Because I knew if I went into Soweto, people would be killed there. Yes. My members would be killed. So I protected them from being killed. I also knew that, because we knew our strength, eh? And if we went with our cutters there, someone else may be killed who is not UPND. <laughs> but even they, I protected their, their lives. Yes. PF must say thank you to us. Yes. Sometimes they must say thank you to us. If it was PF that won the 2021 elections, blood would have been all over. Are you, have you forgotten that HH was said 40 days ago on, Madam, I haven't even been in government three months. It's only 30 days or thereabout. I was told myself that I was fit for a bullet in my head. Have you forgotten? And that after elections, the first action my colleague was going to embark on was to put me behind, behind bars. Yes. Fifteen times was not enough. He needed me to be in there again. PF members, I want to appeal to you, behave yourselves. Don't provoke, don't provoke a situation that we are managing well. Let me turn to that now. We are managing the UPND supporters very well. They may be unhappy now but I know they will be happy very soon. Yes, but equally, I am asking PF to behave themselves. Yes. Because we say to our members, do not attack your colleagues in PF. Yes. Allow them to wear their uniform. But did they allow us to wear uniforms? No. Did they allow us to trade in the markets? No. Were we allowed a taxi driver? who wore a UPND t-shirt at the taxi rank? Was he allowed to, to do business there? Yes, yes, taxi driver, minibus driver, Kurima Tower. They were being beaten for the queue. So PF, behave yourselves. You are lucky that HH is the president of Zambia. You are very lucky. So behave yourselves. Let sleeping dogs lie. But for you sleeping dogs, Keep lying there. <laughs> you will find this valuable in a few years' time. You will look back and cherish this decision that I took. You will look back and respect me then. We want to bring back normals to our country. We want to bring back equity. We want to bring back fairness to our country. We want to bring back freedom. True freedom. No one should be scared to walk to a bus stop. Yes. Let me be presumptuous. We want to open this economy 24-7. I'm working on that. We're working on that. Which means factories can work 24 hours. A factory worker should be able to go for a shift at 02, and no one should attack them. That's where I'm going. Yes. Read me. That's where I'm going so that we can bring crime under control. Because criminals hid in the name of party cadres. Yes. Yet they were thugs, yes. carrying guns, yes. and killing Lawrence Band. Mm. Have I forgotten? No. Have we forgotten? No. Police, do your job. Who killed Lawrence Band? Yes. Are you sure Lawrence must be forgotten like that? Bamwewa, that's where I'm going. I'm walking step by step. Because if we allow the UPND members to revenge, how will the people live in the communities? By now you know that UPND are in the majority. Isn't it? How will PF live in Mandeb? How will PF live in Chawam? If we say to a UPND member, revenge, avenge, What will happen? Think for a moment. It is my duty, my singular honor, to restore order in this country. And I need the cooperation of 
UPND members, PF members, who I'm asking to behave themselves, yes. right? I'm asking other political parties, I'm asking churches, I'm asking civil society, I'm asking traditional leaders. Let us work together to bring freedom to all our people. Don't fight each other. Fight poverty. I will come and sign a certificate for you to fight poverty, not to fight each other. Let's work how we shall get you to trade in timber and to process desks, to make desks, so that when you wait for the budget, wait, just wait for the budget. When the money goes to the constituencies, then you can be a supplier of desks in the schools there. Not buying desks from a foreign country. That's a fight I'm signing a certificate for. So that you can make nurses uniforms. And you'll be given a contract. Proudly so. Just make sure your quality is good. And your price is good. And you deliver on time. Three principles. Then you are my friend. You are our friend. You are a true Zambian. Don't play with this issue of Qatarism, the way PF did it. I went to prison myself 15 times. I want to protect other people from going to prison when they are not committing any crimes. It's enough. I saved enough prison for you citizens. Lawrence Banda, Mapens Chibulo, uh, Joseph Kaunda, Sama Sama, they paid enough blood. We don't want to see any more blood of a fellow citizen, yes. even those who attacked us. I told one of them face to face, I said, I didn't like your behavior when you were in government. Yes. <laughs> but I've forgiven you, but don't do it again. Yes. We can't return to those days. I'm serious. We can't return to a days where you couldn't even walk to a market free. You couldn't go to a to a, to a gas station to put fuel free. If it's you, Mwewa, they were looking for you every day. They were looking for you every day. Now we have given you freedom. I'm sure you should say thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. <laughs> that includes no UPND card that should touch you. Even if you say something on your program which is against HH, nobody should touch you. Just give them a platform to respond. Then we can equalize. That's a country I've been dreaming about for many years. And God has given us an opportunity to take this responsibility. PF pushed infrastructure. Will you stop? Will you continue? I've already in a way answered that question. Infrastructure is important. It's good. But infrastructure must be seen in the context of food for our people. In the context of jobs for our people, in the context of businesses for our people. You know those roads were being done at five times the price. We will not go that way. We want infrastructure, Muchima, but it will not be done at $1.2 billion for a 340 kilometer road. Never, never, never again. You have to take me out first. It won't happen. That's why you put me in this office. It won't happen. Yes, we want the roads, but not at that price. We want the roads, not at this raw quality. The road is being done in front, in the back is peeling off. That's daylight robbery. The project must be finished on time. The Auditor General has found an issue. Mind you, the Auditor General presented the report to us first. That projects are not being completed and more money is being paid for the same projects. Those habits must come to an end. I guess I've answered your question. What is worth doing, we'll do. At the right price, right quality, timely delivery. But you know development is about balancing things. Eh? Do you know why roads were attractive to PF? Because that's where it was easy to be corrupt. Yeah. That's where it was easy to steal money. <laughs>
Prisca. Meeting, you said, in the U meeting with the U.S. Vice President, you said Zambia should align its values to the U.S. That's not true. Absolutely not true, Prisca. If it was a media report, you can get a footage of that meeting. It was recorded. I say that we have values that are aligned. It's different from saying we align our values to the U.S. values. We have Zambian values. What are the Zambian values? We want our freedom as Zambians, isn't it? Those are values. We want our values is anti-corruption. The African values in our communities, if you store, those days you are banished from that community. You were sent away in the bush. Those are our values. They shall not steal. Even Christian values confirm Zambian values, isn't it? Yes. We said we don't want corruption. The Zambian value is American value. It means we're aligned, isn't it? Is that... Does that mean we are changing our values to, to, to support American values? No. Priska. My chant. Wenka shant. That's a more fair and respectable position. Wenka shant. So I withdraw my chant to Wenka shant. <laughs> Isn't it? Am I forgiven? Thank you very much. We talked about there the importance of democracy instead of dictatorship. Those are Zambian values, aligned to American values, isn't it? We talked about human rights, respecting women, respecting children. Those are our values, isn't it? So, if we are aligned in values, we are good to go. But not that we change our values to suit American values. Mm -mm. No. No, no, no. Thank you. I hope I've made my point clear. Also, development, enterprise. Let me, let me say something here. Enterprise. Businesses. We support Zambians to generate business. Why do you think we are changing the licenses that timber license must go to Zambians? Why do you think we are doing that? Because we want Zambians to be business people, isn't it? Yes. Why do we want to give mining license to Zambians? Because we want you to use that license as your contribution to a joint venture with someone who has technology and the cash. It means we want you to be business people. Yes. The more resources you have at your disposal and you look after your children, the less corrupt you become. If you are dependent on handouts, you are susceptible. We do not believe in ubomba muivala, ya muivala. No. No. So we have shared values. Where the American values will be different from ours, we'll say so to our friends. Absolutely, without shame. With confidence, we'll say, huh, we share this value, that value, that value, this one we don't share. You can count on us. Chilong, Madam Chilong. Auditor General report funds abuse. Absolutely. Absolutely. This year, we want to do something different, Madam Chilong. We discussed right there yesterday with the Auditor General. Auditor General complained that in the years past, they even failed to do audits because the colleagues that were in office didn't want the Auditor General to do the audits. You can speculate. Why didn't they want the Auditor General to do the audits? So that they don't pick issues, isn't it? There we agreed, I can make it public now. The Auditor General's report, the Financial Intelligence Center report, Anti-Corruption Commission, DEC, those reports will be handed over to prosecutions so that the prosecutions can decide which matter needs to be taken for. And I said that during the campaign. We are walking the talk. You have used resources, people's resources. The Auditor General's report will not just be a report on the shelves. It will be a report going to prosecution, National Prosecution Authority. And we agreed with the Auditor General that they will take a copy there and I'll wait for a few days. If nothing moves, I will pick my own copy and take it to the National Prosecution Office. <laughs> Hey. 
Didn't move up. You will be happy to know that Parliament Public Accounts Committee should not just be a process. And I asked the Auditor General, I said, these things you are reporting here, do you have vouching documents? Do you have evidential information? And his answer was, yes, Mr. President. We have the details here. And we are happy to support the prosecutions. I said, why were you not supporting them before? He said, there was no political will. The political will is here. Amen. It's here now. Amen. Tell your relatives not to be scared. If they didn't steal, they're okay. <laughs> Sharon, I'm very sorry about the radio station. I'm very sorry. Really, really sorry. I'm not sure what happened there. I hope the police will establish what happened. Uh, United Voice Radio, uh, very, very sorry. And I hope no life was lost in there. Um, but property is equally important. So we are with you. Whatever support we can render to the radio station, I'm talking as an individual, we'll be happy to do that. So let's talk privately. Um, since you say you're representing them, pass that message to them. Whatever we can do to restore that, and all of us, I'm talking to all of us, let's, let's support our friends there. This is what family is all about. In good times and in bad times. Soon you'll discover Bali is your true friend. He is your true friend. Because now you'll make your own comparison of the past and how things are happening now. But just be patient. Just be patient. You are not fighting corruption enough. Members are complaining. I think I've answered that question. Yes, sir. I've just dealt with that on the Auditor General's report. <coughs> we have also asked the Financial Intelligence Center reports. Remember, there were reports in the past that were done, and um, they were defined as witchcraft. Remember? Yes. As in fitting, fitting. Yes. Those reports, too are going to prosecutions, those reports, Sharon, of the Financial Intelligence Center are going to prosecutions. We want to make it sour to, to steal from Zambians. Yes. We want to make it uncomfortable to steal from Zambians. It's been too comfortable. It has been made to be normal in the last 10 years. We want to make corruption and stealing from public you know, coffers, uncomfortable. In Parliament, we said, Sharon, we will be professional in the fight against corruption. Past corruption, present corruption, and the future corruption. You want to be a permanent secretary in the UPND government? Search your soul. I'm serious. Search your soul. You may just walk into trouble, walk yourself into trouble. And I know a lot of people are clamoring to take government jobs because they believe that they will build mansions the way those who were there before them built mansions. I know that. I'm just helping you. Set your soul. Because if you walk in that row and you start taking advantage of the procurement authority you have, the Auditor General will catch you, then prosecutions will visit you. Then you say, you see, HH is not a friend. Even us UPND members is going for them. No, it's not me. It's your own habit yes. going for you. Yes. So, Sharon, just patience. Let's tell our colleagues out there, I know why you are impatient. A lot of money was taken away from you. I know. I am impatient, but I'm also methodical. I'm impatient like you, but I'm also wanting this fight to be professional so that we don't tamper on human rights. Yes. We don't get people arrested before an investigation. Remember what we said? So let the oversight institutions do their job. I know that people are complaining that the institutions are slow. They are not working properly. I have a debt with those institutions just to check what they need. Do they need more support? Do they need technical support? We can arrange that for them. Do they need more skills? We can arrange that for them. 
but the actual job must be done by them. Is that fair? Yes. Would you want HH to do anything else? Yes. If I do something else, I'll be interfering. But we'll provide political will. Sharon. 50 days ago, the ACC could not even arrest anybody. If they did arrest anybody, the PF cadres went to court and threatened the magistrate. This time round, there will be no cadres threatening a magistrate. You see why we don't want cadres in that manner? Magistrates must operate freely. But even magistrates, we send a message to them. They must discharge justice quickly and fairly. I think I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the media, we have just about 12 minutes before we draw to the conclusion of our press conference. We are scheduled to finish at 5. So the permission of the President, I will take three last questions. And if the President pleases after that, he might exercise his discretion. But for purposes of time, the last three sets of questions, Sun FM, Daily Revelation, and uh, Diamond TV. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Afternoon, afternoon. Uh, my name is Sandra Mlinga from Sanitary Media and TV. Um, my question is based on your talks with uh, IMF. Uh, Zambia became the first uh, pandemic era sovereign to default last year on the euro bond. So now the International Monetary Fund demanded that the country implement agreed policies before resuming talks on the long-awaited economic program that held up the restructuring talks with external creditors. What's the new position based on the talks you held with the IMF? Thank you very much. Jane, Reverend, please. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Patson Chilemba, it's a uh, daily revelation. Your Excellency, you said that uh, you ensure that every asset taken away from the people is recovered. I want to find out if the investigations will point towards the involvement of uh, your predecessor, Mr. Ed Galungu. Will you be willing enough to lift his immunity for prosecution? And secondly, Your Excellency, you have been a, excuse me, sir? Just one question, and that's it, please. Thank you very much. Must have said. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's the rule we said, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's, part, it's part of discipline, right? Good afternoon, Your Excellency. from Dama TV. You spoke highly about uh, your trip to the UN General Assembly, where you were able to meet uh, a number of our key partners in uh, economic development. But uh, we do understand that China has been an all-weather friend for countries like Zambia and among many other African countries. When you talk about uh, the Tazara, we cannot talk about it without the mention of uh, the support from China. Now, $120 billion is in the offering that's from China. But since your election, Mr. President, you've, uh, there seem to be little rather interaction with the Chinese government. And uh, just basically, would want to understand the, your position as the new party in government, what's our relationship with China, who we also owe quite a number of uh, money. When you talk about the roles that you spoke about earlier on, all these are coming from uh, our interactions with the people of China. Thank you. Yeah, I think we can deal yeah. with this. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, perhaps with your discre uh, discretion, Mr. President, uh, I see there's a clamor of questions. Can I just take two last questions? No problem. From uh, DC and Diana. Colleagues from ZNBC, you have had a chance to ask your question. I apologize. You're welcome, Mr. President, and I Thank hope you. your commercial flight trip was very comfortable for you. <laughs> I, I want to ask a question concerning uh, government workers that obviously worked for these ministries that uh, have been realigned and maybe. Um, uh, a situation where you've also created new ministries and obviously meaning that those that have been removed will affect workers who used to work there. Are you planning to, you know, take them to other ministries where they can be of a certain relevance or does it mean it is done for them? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, Your Excellency. My name is Diana from Daily Now. 
Um, Your Excellency, in the latter part of your address, you talked about uh, appointments um, of uh, PSS, diplomatic appointments, and other appointments under your jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. but, uh, from the appointments made thus far, there has been a concern, or rather an assertion, by the cross-sective society that you have been appointing friends, close allies and relatives. Would you please clarify on that? Thank you. And relatives. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, members of the press. The president may respond, after which we shall very, very quickly draw to a close of our press conference. Members of the press with questions, I do advise you to send through press queries and we shall continue the conversation. Thank you very much. Mr. President. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be quick this time round. I think in the first round I set the stage for certain matters of principle. And I hope that helps in um, us looking at um, or evaluating our answers to questions. Madam Mulenga, IMF Zambia, deported. Um, you know, are we looking at discussions in a different way? No, I actually touched on it that part of our mission was to engage the IMF, the World Bank, so that we can restore credibility that will allow us to look at the challenge around the debt. I think I said so. And um, the challenge around the debt is to make sure that we restore Zambia's credibility as a partner, either as a borrower in this case, with the lenders, with the debt, st debt stockholders, and also as a partner in development with many other cooperating partners. I think we, I just said we achieved that. Maybe we even overachieved it. So which means the goodwill coming through will help us now to engage in debt restructuring that will give us headroom to release resources towards not consumption expenditure all the time, but investment expenditure. I can only repeat by saying what I've said. I think that's um, the issue there. No one, no lender wants, no borrower wants to default because default creates new issues, complications. So it's better you negotiate your way through in a credible manner than just defaulting. Defaulting means you have actually demonstrated lack of capacity to manage yourself. But we have a heavy debt burden, we know. It's inherited, we know. But we are the government, and we have to tackle it. So we are tackling it. Um, you will see progress that will come out very soon. And I'm sure you begin to isolate the things I'm saying today. Uh, but uh, we'll do our best in that area. If there's a team that can handle this in the political arena, it is this team. I shall repeat that. If there's a team that can handle this complex issue, in the political arena. It is our team. Because the team that was there put us in this mess. So even when they comment, and I see you, you colleagues fail to challenge them, even when they comment in the media, really, if they were sensible, they wouldn't even touch this subject. They would be so ashamed. They took this country into a mess a country whose debt was less than $3 billion just seven years ago. Now we're on $20 plus billion. If I were them, I would be so ashamed that I would be covering my face when this subject comes. But unfortunately, some people have no sense of shame. Eh? Unfortunately. But there you are. This team is well placed. This team has credibility. This team is respected out there. So we shall use all of these credentials to help this country, to help ourselves, to create room for development, revenue release. Have you heard that? To create room for development, revenue release. Hmm. Part soil. Corruption fight, reaching out. If it involves my predecessor, what will you do? 
Will you remove the immunity? We'll cross the bridge when we get there. If we do get there, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. And you'll be in the know. But our intention is not to harass anybody. Our intention is for citizens to recover what is theirs. Our intentions are very noble, except someone else who has a different agenda. You see what I used to do, uh, person. Remember, don't forget, we've been in opposition for a long time, 23 years. Myself, 15 years. Take over from the late Mazok. May he so rest in peace. I wished he lived long enough to see this day. And many others. I wished Lawrence Banda lived long enough to, this, to see this day. And Joseph Kaunda and others. I wished so. But my wishes have no powers. Anyway, when I was mainstream opposition, 15 years, Every time people made accusations about me, that I stole money in this and that, have you forgotten what my responses used to be? I said, take me to court and arrest me. I was confident, I'm still confident, that there's nothing in there. You think that if I'd stolen, I would have survived? Never. So, I think we must work on the premise that you are strong because you are innocent. But I, I won't say more. The China question. That China is one of the lenders. China offers $120 billion. I guess it's not to Zambia. It is to many other countries. Let's get the facts right. Eh? Um, where, where is my friend who asked that question? China is offering $120 billion to who? To many African countries. Just put it no, 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 I hear you. I'm just asking a simple question. So $120 billion, so that people don't write it wrongly. That's why I'm inter interrogating you. Is $120 billion, it's not to Zambia. It is to many countries. Many, many countries. So one would now write a story that HH uh, went to Washington and he came with very little. China was offering $120 billion to, to Zambia. No, 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 no. I'm just correcting things. Is there? So now the issue is that you are saying that we are not talking to China. How do you know we are not talking to China? At a time, we can only take one trip. So the next time I go to China, will the Americans say I'm not talking to Americans? Honestly. <laughs> that doesn't, really logically, that, that, that is not true. We are engaging China. China is an important player in the world. Before I left, for the UN generals. And remember, let's understand what took me to America. Are we aware what took me to America? Yes. It's the General Assembly. Yes. The UN General Assembly even brought China to America. The Chinese were there in the same meeting. Everybody was there. So we all went to America. Does it mean that all those countries are pro-America and they're against China? Because even China was in America. So even China is pro-America in that case. I'm being a bit satirical, but because I've heard this issue. I went to the UN General Assembly. The UN headquarters is the, what hosts the, the General Assembly in New York. So that's why I went there. So we can put the record clear. But I understand your question. Before I went there, we had meetings with the Chinese. Chinese ambassador. Very good meeting. Very, very good meeting. And even when I was away, there were more engagements with China. I'm not sure if you read about that. Our party, UPND, met a Chinese ambassador in my absence. So China, any other country, very important. We need to engage with everybody. And we will continue engaging with China. A lot of debt we owe is to China, isn't it? We cannot do without talking to China. We have to discuss similar issues 
Remember, China is a member of the World Bank. Are you aware of that? Are you aware China is a member of the IMF? Are you aware of that? So when I talked to IMF and World Bank, I was talking to China. I was talking to myself because Zambia is a part owner of IMF and World Bank. Are you aware of that? We're talking to one fund. I think that answers the question. China has their role. They have their role. They're important. We will be engaging. We have been engaging. We actually will continue doing that. We have mutual respect. Other countries, many countries, neighbors. But remember, my friend, I've also said that we must change the narrative. First, we must deal with each ourselves in Zambia. The first love I have is to the people of Zambia. You didn't hear me. My first love is to the people of Zambia. Okay. Then, in that order, to my neighbors. That's why I had a meeting with President Shisekedi. Because if you are not living well with your neighbors, you may have a problem. My next love is to Sadiq. My next love to, is to Africa. And then to the world. That's, those are the people or structures I love. By logic. So we love you. First. Before anyone else. Before Americans, it's you. Before China, it's you. That's why I want Zambians to get the jobs in the sectors before anyone else. Because that's our responsibility, our duties to the people of Zambia first. I think I'm done. Oh, hang on. Diana. Government workers change. Oh, Diana. Dora. 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 <laughs> Lovely Dora. Dora. Your concerns are valid, but you shouldn't be too worried about that. The way we've realigned these things is not really meant to declare anybody redundant per se, by and large. I mean, uh, some of the functions that have gone to green economy and environment includes those that were in the Department of Environment in other ministries. So we're refocusing there. There may be one or two PSCs that may not have a place, very small numbers. Nothing to worry about them. We are conscious of the fact that Zambians need jobs. We are here to create jobs. We are not here to destroy jobs. But we are also aware that if we don't restructure ministries, we will not create jobs anyway. I think that's uh, my answer, Madam Dora. Thank you for your good question. I guess you asked it on behalf of other people who are concerned. Calm them down. Diana. This is where I was, I think I cited that name first. Diana, PS diplomats, HHS appointed friends and relatives. That is not true. He have started the innuendos now. It's too early to start the innuendos. It's too early. It's too early. It's, you know, this thing is, a, I knew it was coming. It's too early to start those innuendos. If you look at cabinet, have you looked at cabinet? Who is my relative on that cabinet? Tell me one. Just one. Diana is shaking her head. She says there's none. She's answering. There's none. These are the innuendos that digress good work. And we bring in a bit of uh, dark stuff, eh? So that you can get at HH now. Because you can't get at him. He's not a thief. He was able to execute himself well out there in the League of Competent People, right? In the League of Competent People. You heard what I said. Not in the League of Incompetence, but in the League of Competent People. Now you say, oh, he went to church, he sang in Tonga. Now let's lampoon him that why did he sing in Tonga? By the way, my church loves it. They said that every time they remember me, they'll be playing that song in the church every Sabbath. They are happy, but Zambians are not happy. What's the issue? What is the issue? What is the issue? Right? We begin to dig in now on negatives. There's no relative of mine on that cabinet. Not a single one. We were able to do what only Kaunda did. We brought a cabinet 
in accordance to our pronouncements that will reunite Zambia and will start by the cabinet. The cabinet will have members from all the ten provinces. We were able to do that even in provinces too, where we didn't get members of parliament. Luapula? Yeah. 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 Yeah, well. Munich and Mun. Yeah. Chapwin, Minister of Agriculture. Manja, I'm Doro Bill. 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 Right? Maybe you are my relative. No, no, sir. No, ah, Waka Buswe. You are my relative, you are a Zambian. You are my relative. <laughs> no, in that, in that sense, yes, the whole cabinet is full of my relatives. In the sense that they are Zambians. Mtolo Piri here, Minister of Agriculture, and Waka uh, Minister of Mines. Very important ministry. This is the one who should start giving licenses to Zambians. This one. Ah, I see. <laughs> Thank you. I like this question, but I also want to drill it properly. I want to answer it properly so that I can smell what our competitors are beginning to create now, so that they can digress attention. We committed to delivering a cabinet of all the ten provinces, and do your own audit. You will find the cabinet is of ten pro members from ten provinces. Because all Zambians are competent. Unlike before, the cabinet before ours, 90%, 95% was from one region. A province of 10, a country of 10 provinces, 90% of the cabinet were from one general region. That's it. But no one would say anything. HH comes, puts a cabinet of fairness, the question starts. Hmm, discrimination, isn't it? Okay. In Luapula, we didn't get an MP, but we have a cabinet minister. We use the tool called nominations. In Muchinga, we didn't have an MP, we have a cabinet member from there. Young man, a youth, Elias Mubanga, minister, small, medium enterprise. That's how serious we are about national unity. So I, we have only begun appointing people. Eh? The greater majority are yet to come. I don't know which other relative in the context being mentioned. I'm serious about it. But I know the issue. I know the issues. People are surprised that we are doing what they couldn't do. Yes. This is the only cabinet you can mirror to Kaunda's leadership. That's all. Yes. There's none else. We are proud of that proud of these ministers. Please support them. Support Kapala, Kapala Minister of Energy. From Luapula. Sifunaburi. Uko, kutari sana. So I can afford now to talk a bit of politics because I'm, I'm done with business. Now this question is a question of politics so I can afford to talk politics. PSCs, how many have we appointed? Two. Two PSCs on. PS Green Energy. Green Energy. PS. PS Musimuko. Am I right? Am I right? Is Musimuko. Musimuko is Tumbuka. Yeah, I love Tumbuka. I'm Tumbuka. Yes, he's my relative in that sense. The other PS is the Treasury. No, three PSs. The other PS is the Treasury. He's not my relative. Yes, because he's from Central Province. Maybe you can say he's my relative. Then the third PS is at uh, this place here, State House. I owe Zambians this explanation. I'm not shy. Is uh, Dr. Kalabo. I'm not sure if Kalabo is my relative, but maybe because Kimal was maybe is my relative. I'm proud of these three PSs, and there will be a lot more coming, including women. Please let us help this country to develop. Let's, let's, not, uh, let's not dig in on old habits, bad habits of maligning each other. 
Who else have we appointed? Attorney General? He's not my relative. If you say he's a... What did you say? My friends and my relatives. He's not my relative. Yes, true, he was with me at Unza. But so are many other people who were with me at Unza. Primary school, secondary school, in Europe, in the workplaces. So, I'm happy with the Attorney General appointment, very happy with the Solicitor General appointment, very happy with the, all the ministers. I wish them well. And there will be many more coming. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for your generosity and for going over and above in the responses that you provided to the numerous questions which our colleagues in the media have raised. Colleagues in the media, again, thank you very much. You. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for having been a part of this press conference. We thank you indeed. I do encourage that those members of the press with questions do feel free to send through press queries and the whole team will go over and beyond in providing answers from across the board. So thank you very much. Uh, before we all be upstanding and sing the national anthem and close, uh, at the pleasure of the President, I have been uh, uh, informed that there will be an opportunity for a photo session between the President and members of the press alone. The President and members of the press alone, and that will be done in batches, obviously recognizing that we're still dealing with uh, the pandemic, and obviously emphasizing the message that we all have to go and get vaccinated. Uh, that said, Shall we all be upstanding? Before that, Anthony, private media, you are welcome. This is your state house. We know there were issues. Sometimes you were not invited. I've asked my colleagues to make sure that you are invited here. This is your state house. This is your state house, private media, public media. This is your state house. I hope that helps.